Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that popped right up. Imagine this. You're walking by a quiet riverside, scanning the gravel as sunlight sparkles on the surface. You're not looking for diamonds just yet. You're looking for something that could lead you to diamonds. That's something? They're called indicator minerals, and they're like clues in a real-life treasure hunt. These minerals are often found alongside diamonds, especially when both are carried from deep underground by volcanic eruptions millions of years ago. While diamonds are rare and harder to spot, indicator minerals are more common and easier to find. If you know what to look for, these small stones can lead you in the right direction. They've been used by geologists and gemstone hunters for years to find diamond-rich areas. In this video, we'll explore the top minerals that can signal diamonds are nearby, how to find them along rivers, and simple ways to test them right in the field. You don't need expensive gear, just knowledge, patience, and a sharp eye. Let's get into the real signs that can help you discover something extraordinary. So what exactly are these indicator minerals? Well, when diamonds are formed deep inside the Earth, they come up to the surface through special volcanic pipes made of a rock called kimberlite. But kimberlite erodes over time, And as it breaks down, both diamonds and these special minerals get washed into rivers. These indicator minerals are strong. They don't break down easily, even after long journeys in rivers. So if you find them in gravel, it means something interesting could be hiding nearby. Why are they important? They often travel with diamonds. They are easier to spot than diamonds. They survive erosion and settle in riverbeds. If you learn how to find these minerals, you'll have a much better chance of discovering a diamond later on. Let's take a look at the most important ones you can actually find in river gravels. Here's a simple guide to the top minerals that often show up where diamonds might be. 1. Pyrope Garnet Color Dark red to purple. Why it matters. Found deep underground where diamonds form. Where to look in heavy black sands and gravels. Look for red sparkles when panning. Two, chromite color. Shiny black or dark brown. Why it matters comes from kimberlite pipes. Tip. Use a magnet, it won't stick strongly, but it's heavier than normal sand. 3. Ilmenite color. Black to steel gray. Why it matters found in the same volcanic rocks as diamonds. Test. Weakly magnetic, heavy and shiny in sunlight. 4. Chrome diopside color. Bright green. Why it matters one of the best signs of a diamond source. Tip. Looks like peridot but may be darker and glassy. 5. Olivine peridot. Color, olive green or yellow green. Why it matters found in peridotite rocks which can host diamonds. Note. Not very durable. If you find fresh pieces, you're probably close to the source. 6. Rudal color, reddish brown to black. Why it matters a helpful clue, especially in combination with others. 7. Spinel color, black, red, or blue. Why it matters, rare but sometimes found with other indicators. 8. Magnetite color, metallic black. Why it matters, not a direct clue, but often shows up with pyrope and chromite. Test, strongly magnetic. 
Seeing just one of these might not mean much, but if you find a few together, especially red garnets, green diopsides, and black chromite, you could be on the right trail. Now that you know what to look for, let's talk about how to find them. Step 1. Find a good spot. Look for river bends behind big rocks or old gravel bars. These are areas where heavy minerals settle over time. Step 2. Collect material scoop gravel from near the bottom down to bedrock if possible. Use a gold pan or classifier screen to sort materials. Step 3. Pan for heavy minerals. Use a gold pan to wash away the lighter sand. You'll be left with black sand, garnets, and possibly indicator stones. Step 4. Check carefully. Use a magnifying glass or a small microscope. Look for shiny black, bright red, or green crystals. Separate interesting stones with tweezers. Step 5. Simple field tests. Magnet test. Chromite and ilmenite are weakly magnetic. Magnetite is strongly magnetic. Hardness test. Rub the stone on a piece of glass. If it scratches glass, it's harder than quartz. Streak test. Rub the stone on a ceramic tile to see the color of the powder. Bonus tip. Bring small sample bags and label everything. Take notes on where you found them. You might want to come back. Finding these minerals is exciting, but what do you do next? Once you find indicators, the key is to follow the trail upstream. The goal is to trace the minerals back to their source, maybe even to an old volcanic pipe. What to do? Sample more spots upstream. See where the indicators become more common. Map your finds to narrow down the hot zone. You can also send your stones to a gem lab or a geology department for help. Even if you don't find a diamond right away, you're learning valuable skills. Every mineral you find is part of the story and gets you closer. So next time you walk along a river, remember, you don't have to find a diamond to be on the right track. Look for the clues nature leaves behind. Red garnets, green diopsides, black chromite. They're not just pretty stones, they're the secret signs of something greater. By learning to spot these indicator minerals, you're turning guesswork into real field knowledge. Thanks for watching. If this helped you understand how to start your diamond hunting journey, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more gem hunting tips, and drop a comment if you found any of these stones before. Your next river walk could be the start of something incredible. Stay curious, stay sharp, and may the next scoop of gravel show you a sign of hidden treasure